Welcome back to week two of our course from Media Computation to Data Science. This week is all about numbers. In week one, we looked at the building blocks of media. This week, we're going to turn them into numbers. Once we have these numbers, we can basically do anything. In the first video, we'll try it with colors. So in the first step, I want to explain to you how SNAP's pen color model works. The pen category in SNAP has blocks in which I can set the pen cutter. They use the following color model, it's called HSV. 8 stands for hue, S stands for saturation, and V stands for value, which we called brightness in this case. I want to shortly explain how this color model works. So I made a script here that sets the pen hue to zero at the beginning and has full saturation and full brightness, so I get the maximum intensity uh, of a color. And then I'm going to change the hue by one and move forward with my pen so we can see how the hue component of the color is set. Oh, but maybe let's try that with a bigger pen size. 30. And let's just try it again. So a pen hue of zero means it's red and the pen hue of 100 is also red. In between I can find all the, the other hues. So for example a hue of 50 right in the middle gives teal. A hue of around 60, 70 ish gives blue. Then we also have pink, green, yellow. So we can find all the hues by choosing numbers between zero red on the left side and 100 red on the right side. How do the other components work? So we also can use the same script to access the saturation or set the saturation of our color. So let me move the pen here. Let me just duplicate the script. So we're now going to try a saturation from 0 to 100 for red. So I can keep the hue at 0 and I will set the saturation to 0 at the beginning and then I will change the saturation by 1 each time I'm moving forward. As you can see now, a saturation of zero gives me white. Saturation in the HSV color model means the amount of pure white that my color has. So if I have 100% pure white, it's just white. A saturation of 100 gives, gives me like the maximum amount of color intensity. The same thing also works for the brightness, so the value in the HSV. Let me duplicate that again. And now we're setting the saturation to 100 and the brightness to zero at the beginning. And we're going to increase the brightness each time. Starting with the brightness from, of zero, we see that the brightness of zero means it's black. So we have absolutely no brightness, black color. And then again, we're going to get to the maximum intensity again. Now we can use that to basically build any color we like. Let me just clear the screen and for example we can try to go for a well, let's try a dark blue. So I remember blue was at around 70 so I set the pen hue to something like 70 and I want a dark color so I'm going to choose a brightness that is closer to zero than to 100. So maybe let's set the pen's brightness to 30. And then we can choose different saturation that depends on how yeah, saturated we want our color to be. So we're going to use the third block and maybe we set the saturation to 100. And now if I click that script, you can see that my turtle sprite is putting on a turtle sprite in the, cost, in the color of the pen. So now I'm getting a pretty dark blue. We can now use that, or we want to use that now, to create confetti on our stage in different colors. For that, I made a new empty project that we can use to create our confetti. First, we want to set the pen color randomly. So we now know that we can use the set pen hue, saturation or brightness block from the pen category to set the pen color. If we want to do that randomly, we can go to the operators category and 
pick a random number each time we're going to execute that block. So I'm going to pick a random hue between 1 and 100 each time I'm setting the hue. We're going to do the same for brightness and saturation. Just to check that, I can increase the size of my costume. So you now see the pen color in here. Each time I click, I should get a random color. Okay, that was pretty dark plum, lighter green, khaki. So seems to work. We get different colors each time we set the pen color and they are picked randomly. Now to the confetti part. For the confetti part, we want to draw a circle on the stage each time after we set the pen color. To draw a circle, we can just put the pen down and move zero steps. So if you imagine you put the pen down and then you're like not moving at all, but you're still getting the dot at the position where, you, where your pen or your sprite were. So let's build that. We move zero steps. Beforehand, we put the pen down and afterwards we put the pen up again. Now, when I click that, I basically can't see anything. Yeah, maybe that super small dot, that's because our pen size is just one pixel. So we might want to increase the pen size first so we can get bigger confetti parts. Maybe let's try a pen size of 10. Okay, here it worked. Now I can put all that together. So first I want to set the color and then I want to draw my confetti. It seems to work. The problem is they are all at the same position now. So to create confetti all over the stage, I have to move to a random spot before I start drawing. For that, I can go to the motion category and use the go to block with the random position as an input option. So now if I put that together or put the random position at the top, I'm moving to a random position, then I'm picking a random color, and then I'm drawing confetti with size zero. Great. Again, the awesome thing for computers is that they can do stuff really fast automatically. So if I wrap around a loop here, let's use the forever, I can automatically create a lot of confetti. That's already pretty cool. However, it would be even cooler if I could use that to recreate an image. So I can just import a photo of me into my project. I have one with me and Alonso, so I can just drag that into my project. Oh wait, let's, let's create another sprite first where we can drag that photo into. So I'm going to add another sprite and I'm going to call that photo. And I'm going to drag my photo into that sprite. So I have it here. I'm going to move it to the center. And then also I'm going to make it undraggable so I'm not accidentally dragging my photo around all over the stage. I can do that by unchecking the box here. So now I can't drag the photo around anymore. Let's go back to the other sprite. This sprite is going to sense the colors in this picture now. And then it's going to set its pen color according to the color that it measured in the picture. And then it's going to draw a confetti in that respective color at a random spot. So we can reuse that part of our script, but we need to use another block. The block that we want to use is in the sensing category because it's going to sense something in the image. It's the hue at <laughs> block. With this block, I can find out what hue at the position of that sprite is. So I can use hue at myself here. What we should take care of now is that our sprite is on top of the rest of the project so that we can see where it is and move it around. So if we go to the looks category, we can tell the fry, uh, sprite to always go to the front layer. So if I click that now, I see that my sprite is now on top of the image. 
If I'm now measuring the hue at myself, so for example, let's go to Alonso here, it gives me 11.5 as a value for the hue that it measured at that position. Let's check that back with the pen block. 10 here, yeah, might be true. So let's try it again with, for example, the blue blocks here. So blue should be something around 70-ish. So if we're measuring the hue at ourselves now, it's 64, so also that seems to work. So we can use that block to sense colors in other parts of our project. We can use that now to recreate the image. So we want to set the pen color to the respective color in the underlying photo. For that, we're going to reuse that part of the script, but we're not going to pick a random color each time, but we're going to set the hue to the hue it's measuring at itself, the saturation to the saturation it's measuring at itself, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to remove all the random stuff here, and I'm going to add the hue at myself, the saturation at myself, and also the brightness at myself. Clicking that now, it should go to a random position and take the color of that position. So let's try that. Maybe let's not try it in the loop, but outside of the loop. Now it moved to, oh, it moved outside of the image. So let's clear that again and try it again. Now I'm here on the background of the snap project that's running here in the background and it's taking the dark gray color of that background. Let's try it again. So it seems to think that my hand is brownish. That's also about right. Let's try it again. My lips are kind of reddish. So also that seems to work. We can now reuse that to recreate the image. Let's put it back into the forever and let's run it for some time. What you can see now is it seems not to work, but you can see all the small dots here. So it's drawing underneath the image. We can get rid of the image by just making it transparent. So now we can go back to the photo and we can set its ghost effect, so the transparency of the costume, to 100. Or maybe let's try it with 50 first so we can still see the photo. Um, and you see that it's drawing behind the photo. If I set the ghost effect to 100 now, I can um, see that it's, the photo is not seen anymore, but it can still measure the colors of the photo because the photo is still there, it's just invisible. What you can also see is that my green flag does not look like the green flag anymore. That's because I put on, turned on the turbo mode. If you try the project, it's pretty slow at the beginning. So I can, I can show that again. I will just clear the stage and you see that it's kind of slow and I can turn on the turbo mode to make it run faster. As you can see now, it's recreating the image that I had as a photo with pixels that are pen size 10 dots. If I want to get a clearer image, I can just decrease the pen size. And I can also do that while the project's running, so that's pretty cool. Um, I can set the pen size to 5 now, and all the dots it's drawing from now on are just pen size 5. So you can see that we also have smaller dots here, for example, or here, for example. And you can also try it with different sizes. Another idea, for example, would be if you don't do dots, but rather stripes, we could just move, for example, 10 steps each time. Now we're getting the image with stripes or lines instead of dots. So that's also nice. Now it's your turn to come up with your own ideas how you can recreate the image. For example, um, you could do it with your name. Here we have Jens and he's written or his, his image is written from his name Jens. So what we did here is we picked the color and used the right block to write his name in the respective color of the photo. The next thing that you could try is, or that's me just in dots while I'm wearing my Alonso costume for Halloween. You could also try a 
behind frozen glass effect. So in this case, we used um, a random direction to let our stripes point into that random direction. And then it looks like you are behind a frozen glass. This is Alonso on his summer vacation. So this is, a, is actually an image from my summer vacation. And I put Alonso in here. And what you can see is that you can also change the colors. So if you don't use the color that was in the original image, but rather use a given color. So in this case, I said the color is always to be pink. And the rest is only changed depending on the underlying picture. You can create images in other colors. Also, this is Jens and me um, on vacation in Austria. And we're also here with um, Alonso. So what I did in this image is um, to use a transparency effect to like create a, hmm, how would you call that? It, it lets the image look a little softer than it would if you had just used the fully colored dots. So also try playing with transparency. And now, to your exercise for this week. In this week, we want to ask you to recreate a campaign that the WWF Japan launched back in 2002. It's called Population by Pixel, and it works like that. You get a project with um, images of animals and also numbers of individuals that are still left for this species. And then you should recreate the images and the number of pixels in your image is going to be or should be the number of individuals that are still left of that species. So here, for example, this is an image of the giant Ibis. And um, there are only 194 individuals left. So you can't really see the image. Now it's your turn to get started, because this is the end of unit one. Thank you for your attention. Have fun with the exercise and see you in the next video.